Okay, um, I'm just waiting to see if somebody's going to join me here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, maybe start uh, um, uh, to say a few things here. So we're in our fourth out of the fifth unit, fourth out of the fifth week here for our summer session. Um, so kind of as I've been reminding, um, the fifth unit, fifth week is a little bit shorter than um, our first four weeks here. So just keep that in mind. So in fact, uh, so this week we'll have our normal schedule. Um, so our, we have problems that do on Tuesday that I'll talk about here real quickly. And we'll see if anybody shows up, has some questions on these. And we have our program assignment on Thursday. Um, and then the test will be open on Friday and Saturday uh, for you to work on. Uh, but next week, uh, after that, for our final unit, uh, because of the shortened time frame, I still made the problem set due on Tuesday and the program assignment due on Thursday for unit five next week. But of course, we don't have any time after Thursday. So you do have to have a test four I open up on Wednesday and Thursday. So, so you have to also be doing test four while you're working on your programming assignment. Okay. So keep that in mind. Um, so let's look at the problem set real quickly. Um, this problem set has like four or five questions. Oops, I didn't do that. Um, has four or five questions. I've been usually given just like two, I think, um, or maybe three um, on the first three here. So we should be able to find the problem set at the usual place. So if we go to our unit four, under the first um, chapter, we've got the problem set question here. So um, yeah, there's four, four parts this time. Um, so kind of a hint on this first one, uh, be thinking about, uh, go, go back to your data structures and analysis of algorithm class, okay? So, I mean, I want this in terms of big O notation here, all right? So, so go and read in our te textbook chapter um, seven, uh, about dynamic partitioning and about uh, the, uh, the the placement algorithms, page, um, well, not really page placement, but the placement algorithms for um, new memory, new partition requests, basically, right? So there's different variations like best fit, first fit, next fit. So you have to think of this as a linked list of free blocks, all right? So basically this first one is just asking uh, what's the big O? So, you know, if my free block list is size 100, um, you know, what is the expected uh, big O of, of um, you know, the amount of, of searching I'm going to have to do if N is 100, just make it concrete. You don't know what we mean by N here. So when I'm saying N, that means that we've got a linked list of the free blocks. Uh, and there's n free blocks on that linked list. So um, if there was 100 free blocks, then n would be 100, and the linked list would be for 100, of, um, basically 100 locations in, in memory, 100 blocks in memory that are currently not allocated that could be used for a new uh, request. Right? Um, all right, question two is about paging systems. Um, chapter seven, chapter eight. Um, for question three, um, so, you know, I, I have used this question before. Um, lots of students don't uh, maybe get into it quite deep enough, understand what's going on here. So just real quickly, what's happening here is um, you're given all the information that you need to answer these questions, okay? So, so a page size is one kilobyte. And an and integer takes four bytes. So a kilobyte is 1,024 bytes, right? So uh, each integer um, takes four bytes here. So the reason why that's important, of course, is because we're holding arrays of integers. So we're holding actually arrays of, um, you know, we define size to be 64. So these are 64 times 64, which is what? Um, calculator here. 
So that's that's 4,096. So we actually hold 4,096 integers in array A, and, and each one of these also holds 4,096, right? Um, and remember, a, a single integer is four bytes. So that's actually four times 4,096, so, or 16,384 bytes. So each one of these arrays needs 16,300 bytes. That is um, 16 kilobytes, right? So each array needs 16 pages, right? But you're given, as, as, as we already talked, we, we, we talked about that, right? So, so it's, it's clear that each array requires 16 pages if you work that out. Um, but we've actually only got four pages um, of, of actual physical memory in the system, right? So, so that's the second. So, so we're using we're using a, a virtual memory kind of paging scheme here, paging system here. Um, so all, we can only load in four pages, of which um, one of the pages will be used uh, to hold the program. So we effectively have three pages, right? And basically, what we're doing is we're holding one page. What one page is loaded with some data from array A, one page of data from array B, and one page of data from array C, right? Um, so that means that in order to do, if you have the right page for, for, for whatever the index i and j is, if you have the right page, then I can access that one integer at the ith row jth column from A and add it to the ith row jth column from B, and then store that back into the ith j reference on C, right? But again, that one page doesn't hold all of A, uh, you know, all of, all the values of A, it just holds some of the values, right? In fact, you know, it only holds one sixteenth of the values because we we need we actually have sixteen pages are needed for each one of these arrays. So, um, if you do that, then you should be able to calculate, you know, how many page faults. Okay, so um, so maybe I should reword this question a little bit. But when I say how frequently, um, you could do that in terms of you know how like what is the value of i and j each time um, a page fault occurs or page faults occur right um although a, a better answer just be explicit on this so tell me exactly how many page faults occur when running this loop right so so there is a, an exact correct answer to that question if, if I, when I completely run through all this loop, how many page faults will I end up having? It should be clear that the number of times that the statement is executed is 64 times 64, right? Or um, um, 4,096 times, right? So page fault doesn't have to occur every time. And then, yeah, and then it turns out that this um, code here isn't as efficient as it could be, right? So you can modify this program to actually greatly reduce the, the page faults. Right? So you think about it and do that. Right? So after you do that, the frequency of the page faults will be could be a lot less if you do that correctly. And then for the final question, um, this is, I ask you to do the same thing as the examples in our lecture videos and in our textbook. Um, so, you know, you're, you're doing a, a page replacement um, simulation by hand here. So th this is a sequence of page references. Uh, I had to continue it on two lines. It was too long to, to fit on one line here. You know, so, so we start initially at time zero. Um, with a reference to page one, and then at time one with a reference to zero, and then so on. And then after this time step, um, we continue on. So after that time step, then, then there's a reference to page five and so on, right? So you have to first show me LRU. So again, it's not, you have to show me um, the, the, the frames of memory at each successive time step. So it's, it's not correct to like just show me the final contents of memory. I need, I need to show like, like 
we do in our textbook and, um, and, and we do in all of our examples at every time step. So after there's a reference to page one, what, does, what are the physical contents of memory? Um, so we're assuming that we've got four physical frames of memory here uh, that we're holding our reference pages in. But actually the, the first uh, four, there's, this is gonna, the first three will be misses, right? But, but these will just be initial page loads uh, because initially memory is empty. So you'll, you'll, the first frame will have page one in it and the second frame will have page two, will have page zero, the third frame will have page two. Then this is a hit, right? So no, so a page fault doesn't occur. And then another hit. And then finally, here we have our final load. So our initial contents of memory will be one, zero, two, and then seven. And then after that, we'll start having actual uh, need to make page replacement decisions. So, so it's really after that when you know you'll have to make a page replacement decision using least recently used page. So find the least recently used page and replace it, or use FIFO. So, so treat the buffer as a circular buffer and do first in, first out page replacement. So, um, so yeah, that's all I'm going to say, but, but that's our problem set. So let's do by Tuesday as usual here. Um, so let me get the, the programming assignment here. I should have that up. Um, so for program four, If we're doing memory management, um, um, we are building a page replacement scheme. Um, um, so, so our simulation is about doing a page replacement simulator. So you know, make certain that you've read uh, the, the, the read closely about in chapter eight about uh, page replacement scheme. So so FIFO least recently used um, and, and the clock. Um, we're going to be implementing a clock page replacement scheme ultimately. Assignment four here. Um, at this point, um, people should be relatively familiar with, with the, the framework. So, so the framework is the same. Um, although I have a few things that I, I do want to talk about here. So, so this one's a little bit more complex than um, some of our previous simulations that we've worked with and built um, in this class so far. So let's let's look at what we've got here. Um, so as usual, well, because of we've had those problems, do make certain before you begin that actually let me go ahead and open up that assignment first. So um, so under the sink um, assignment, assignment four. We do need to, um, those problems that we had, you do need to check to make certain that you've got a correct VS code and a dot um, CLang format, right? So um, you know, probably the easiest way to check if you've got the um, correct uh, uh, VS code configuration is whether the, the build system is working with the keyboard shortcuts or not. So the, the key bindings um, are defined in, the dot vs code here. So in short, if you bring up the um, test, um, you can't do a control shift one to do a clean and a control shift two to do a make all, then probably you have to fix your dot vs code subdirectory like we, we had to for the first three assignments. Control shift three to run the test. And then you can always easily check your um, your code formatting if you put um, a curly brace on the end. Um, that's one of the things it should enforce that it always puts that on a line of its own, indented correctly for the code block. So when you, when you do a set. Um, okay, so initially you're going to be doing your uh, work in the um, um, I 
in, in the paging system class, but you are ultimately going to have to also be doing some stuff in some of these page replacement schemes. So let me talk about those. Um, so the, the paging system is the base class. Um, um, so, so I talk a little bit about the structure of the object-oriented design uh, here in the introduction. Um, so the paging system is a um, is the main class that runs the simulation, right? So, so it simulates uh, page replacement um, um, system for an operating system. Right? But um, it doesn't actually implement or do make the page replacement decision. So um, the page replacement decisions are done by a separate uh, helper um, class. So, so there's a bunch of, of things called um, um, page replacement um, schemes, okay? So, um, the, and, and this is um, implemented as a standard um, object-oriented um, um, inheritance hierarchy. So there's, there's a base class called the page replacement scheme. This is the, the base class of, of these that defines the API for making page replacement decisions. And then there's child classes of page replacement scheme that implement particular page replacement decisions. So there's FIFO page replacement uh, scheme and um, um, so maybe there's not only FIFO, but you know, we could have like LRU page replacement scheme or other, so other specific page replacement uh, scheme. Um, So that's an example of a um, design pattern. Let me bring up the um, um, paging system, the HPP first here. So you'll notice um, if you look at the paging system class that uh, one of its private member variables is that it has, uh, it, knows it has a generic pointer to a page replacement scheme, right? So it uses the, the base class page replacement scheme but the scheme could actually be a, a concrete child instance. So this could be a FIFO page replacement scheme, or it could be a clock page replacement scheme, or whatever, right? So as far as the paging system is concerned, it doesn't, doesn't care what the particular implementation of the scheme is, uh, just as long as it's some type of a page replacement scheme for some child. Okay? So this is an example of a um, of a um, object-oriented design pattern um, known as, uh, what's the technical uh, name for this? Uh, I always draw a blank on this, but, but it's basically like a helper um, class here, right? So the paging system doesn't do the actual page replacement decisions itself. Um, it just has a um, um, some scheme that's created for it. And whenever it needs to make a page replacement decision, it asks the scheme to make the decision of which page should be replaced, right? So this makes it easy then to just plug in whatever type of page replacement scheme we need by creating or instantiating the, the, the correct scheme here, okay? So um, that's what's going on here. Just a second. Well, I'll come back and look at the page replacement scheme here. So, um, um, so you will ultimately have to implement um, a clock page replacement scheme. Um, but uh, the first four tasks are, you know, kind of warm up. So they're as usual. The first one is implementing a few um, getter or setter methods for the paging system. Um, so, like for the first test case, um, is a uh, some getter methods, get memory size, get system time. We look at the first test case here. It's over here. We look at the first 
test. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just testing get memory size, get system time. Um, let's open up the implementation file here. So let's look at the um, get memory size here. All right. So yeah, these are stubbed out as usual. So, so most of the getter methods are just simply returning the correct um, um, private member variable here, right? Like the memory size can be returned. Sorry, right? The memory size is the number of physical memory frames. Okay, so when we create a new paging system, um, we can have um, simulations where the number of physical frames is different, right? So, so we can simulate the number of physical frames. So as usual, you know, maybe I should have looked at one of the simulation files as well, kind of to get a start off here. So like, um, if you look at the, the simulation files, Oh, um, yeah, we, so we don't specify the, the memory size. All, all we specify in the simulation files is um, a page reference stream, okay? And so the, the first number is just the, the total number of page references. So for the, the um, page reference one simulation, um, there's actually 12 page references. You know, and the first one is, is a reference from data on page two, and then three, and then two, and so on, right? So that's all that's in the um, page reference. Um, the, the simulation files. Um, but um, yeah, but when we run a simulation, um, we can we can specify the, the physical frames of memory that we want to simulate. You know, it's like three or four um, or five is what we usually use for when we're um, you know, I'm doing small simulations like this by hand, right? Um, and then, yeah, I won't say too much more about the things you have to do for the paging system. Um, so they get, there, there's a few more, um, more, uh, you know, concrete, so, so more crucial functions of, of the paging uh, system simulation that you have to implement. So in particular, you know, um, the, the, when, when you do a paging system, the, the general algorithm is this, right? Um, so you have a reference, so, so time moves forward, and, and at each time step, there's a reference to data on a new page, right? So your first question is always going to be, is that a hit or a miss, okay? And so it's a hit, if the, the data that's being referenced on a particular page is already loaded into a physical frame in memory, right? So if it's a hit, you don't have to do anything. You've already got the data in memory. So what the operating system would do, it would access that data and um, make it available to the, um, um, to the program that's running that, that wanted to use that data, right? Well, but it could be a miss. Okay, so the is page hit is 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 a, a boolean function that returns true if, if it's a hit and returns false if it's not. If it's, a, if it's not a page hit, that's a that's a miss. Right. In that case, we have to make a page placement or a page replacement decision. Right. So. Um, So, um, so yeah, you actually, in, in, I asked you to implement the do page placement um, in this assignment. So that really just does um, an initial load of a page in the memory if, when, when memory is empty. So if, if, if a physical frame currently doesn't hold anything, we don't have to make a replacement decision. We can just um, load a, um, a page that, um, it needs to be loaded um, into that free frame, right? So that, that's what page placement is, right? So page placement would basically always just do that as as as, as a FIFO decision, right? So so we, we keep track of the frames of of physical memory 
um, in this simulation, we do it as a FIFO because uh, we don't have anything in the simulation where a, a frame could have something in it and then it bec becomes empty, it gets unloaded, right? So that never happens. So once, so initially memory is empty, but once memory gets loaded, um, the frames are always gonna have some page in there, okay? So after the initial loads, then we start doing page replacement um, decision. Um, but I think we already implemented the, the page replacement decision. But the page replacement decision, if you look at it, um, is um, actually done by asking the, the, the page replacement scheme what to do, right? So, so let's go ahead and look at the page placement and the page replacement here in um, our page and system implementation file. Um, so here we've got do page placement. Um, so you do have to implement the do page placement. Um, so um, what I suggest to do to implement the do page placement is just to do a search, okay? So, I mean, you could keep add an extra member variable, but if you just search um, and, and um, through all the frames starting at frame zero. Uh, there's an easy way to check whether a frame is empty or has a page in it currently. Um, and as soon, as you, as soon as you find an empty frame, just return that empty frame. And then, like I started saying, the, the do page replacement is actually already given for you, but notice what it does um, um, is, um, I mean, it's, a replay, page replacement should only be called if memory is full, right? So if memory is full though, what we do um, is um, uh, we, we call this make replacement decision, right? Um, There it is. So make replacement decision is also given, but it's pretty easy. So all it does is it calls the uh, whatever the, the page replacement scheme is, it calls the make replacement decision on that, which returns a frame to be replaced. And, and that will be the frame um, that we select for replacement um, in, in the do page replacement. Okay, so let's, let's talk about um, these. Uh, replacement schemes, because um, after you get these done, um, you actually are gonna be implementing the, uh, a clock page replacement scheme. Um, now there's, there's, a, there's an implementation of a, of a simple FIFO already done there because most of the stuff you have to do for clock is pretty similar to FIFO, right? Um, Let's, let's look real quickly at the page replacement scheme and at the FIFO um, page replacement scheme. So the ab, um, like I mentioned, the abstract base class um, is just simply called page replacement scheme. So the way I think about you know base class, this is a, a, an abstract base class. So, so it actually has these virtual functions in here, pure virtual functions. So that means that this class is not meant to be uh, an actual concrete instance of page replacement scheme is not meant to be done because um, it doesn't actually implement any particular page replacement policy. So it can make a replacement decision. This abstract base class is just defining an API. Okay, so 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 everything that inherits, uh, so all child classes that want to actually implement a page replacement scheme have to implement these virtual functions. Right. So in particular, besides the constructor and the destructor, um, they have to, you have to implement uh, these, what, four functions. So, so to reset, reset the page replacement scheme, um, a method that's called whenever a page hit occurs, because some page replacement schemes, like the, the clock um, page replacement scheme, need to know when page hits occur, because they have to update information about them. Um, get scheme status is really just for running the um, 
the, um, the, the, the system test and running the simulation. So this just returns a string representation of the current status of, of the page reform scheme. And then the most important one though is the make replacement decision, right? So whenever this is called um, on a concrete implementation of a page replacement scheme, this should return a frame number of the physical memory frame that should, whose page should be replaced right, according to the replacement scheme. So if you look at, um, If you look at um, a concrete implementation of a page replacement scheme like the FIFO, so you don't have to do anything in the FIFO, you're going to be implementing the clock. The, the FIFO is already given to you and working. But you, you'll probably want to look over this to understand how these work, right? So, so in those FIFO page replacement scheme, it, it publicly inherits from the base class page replacement scheme, okay? And since it's a concrete instance, it has to implement um, all of those virtual functions. Um, so it has to give concrete implementations of the reset scheme, page hit, hit scheme status, and the make replacement scheme. Right. Now for a FIFO, um, all you need is like a frame pointer because for FIFO, we create memory as a circular buffer. We start off with the frame pointer at zero, right? So let, let's look at the constructor for the um, um, FIFO page replacement here. So, uh, well, FIFO, the, the, the constructor for the FIFO just calls reset scheme. So reset scheme, the only thing we have to do to reset our page replacement scheme, um, our FIFO page replacement scheme, is put the frame pointer back to um, frame zero, since we're using zero-based indexing here, right? Um, so that frame point is zero. So basically the first time you're asked to make a replacement decision, you're just gonna say, replace the page at frame zero. So you're just gonna return the frame pointer and you're gonna increment frame pointer, being careful to wrap it back around the buffer since we're treating the buffer as a, single, as, as a circular buffer here. Um, so page hit is part of the page replacement scheme API, right? But not all page replacement schemes need to, to know about or do anything when a page hit occurs. And, and FIFO is one of those. It doesn't really care. You know, it doesn't keep track of page hit. So we don't have to do anything for FIFO. But um, for your clock page replacement scheme, so clock page replacement scheme uses a frame pointer like the FIFO does. So you will need a frame pointer, the same as like FIFO. But for a clock, we keep also a use bit, right? So for a clock replacement scheme, you're going to need not only a frame pointer, but you're going to need an array of use bits, right? Where the bit can be either zero or one or true or false um, for each physical frame of memory. And initially, all of your use bits should be set to um, um, false or zero, um, right? But so basically a use bit should get flipped to one or should get flipped to true whenever a, a hit occurs, right? Because the use bits are kind of like a keeping track of how recently that page was used or that page was hit. So every time a page hit occurs for a, for a clock page replacement, you wanna set its use bit to be one, right? So for the clock page replacement, you, you are gonna be doing something for the page hit, um, keeping track of those use bits. Um, okay, you will have to implement a, a get scheme status for the clock page replacement scheme. It, it'll, it'll look pretty similar to this, so you can probably copy and paste this. The only difference for the clock page replacement um, is you need to add some extra information that shows the use bit, okay? And you'll need to do that correctly to get the system test passing. But um, let me come back to that real quickly. Uh, let, let me skip and finish off actually the, the replacement decision here. And then, and then we'll come back to the system tests. Um, and then finally, the, the most important part of these page replacement schemes is making the replacement decision. So for FIFO, um, it's relatively um, simple. Um, uh, 
Um, although here I should point out, notice that uh, you, you, it may be tough to, to find this, but um, all page replacement schemes um, actually have a pointer back to the paging system called sys. Um, so you won't know that unless you look at the base class, right? So if, if, you, if you look at the uh, page replacement scheme.hpp file, um, there is um, a protected member variable called sys, right? So, so basically all page replacement schemes like FIFO and CLOCK have the sys, it's just that it's defined in the base class, right? And this will be, uh, every time a page replacement scheme is created, um, the, a pointer to the paging system uh, will be saved in there, right? So that means that you can call, you can, you, can, you know, the, the paging uh, replacement schemes um, can get information from the paging system if they need to, right? So this, this is a good example of that. So, for FIFO to do its, its work, it needs to know what the memory size is. So how many physical frames there are that are being simulated by the paging system. So it can just ask the paging system, what, what's the, the, the memory size, which is the, the number of physical frames of memory, right? We need that because for FIFO, um, we have to treat the buffer as a circular buffer. So after we increment the frame pointer by one, we might have to mod it by the, 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 the number of physical frames, by the memory size, to wrap it back around to zero. So, so that's what this mod is doing here, is wrapping it back to zero um, if we increment past the end of our buffer. We need to go back to the beginning of the circular buffer there. All right. But notice, um, you know, the actual frame that we're going to replace is, is whatever the frame pointer is pointing to. But so, so the make replacement decision is, I don't know, maybe misnamed a little bit. It, it's doing both making a replacement decision, but it's also keeping all of its internal information up to date so that the next time it's asked to make a re replacement decision, it'll correctly replace the next, you know, keep, keep going through the circular buffer and, 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 and replace the next physical frame. Right. So for a, a clock page replacement scheme, you do the same sort of thing. So you treat the memory as a circular buffer, but instead of just always replacing the, the frame that's being pointed to by the frame pointer, you first check the use bit. Okay. If the use bit is zero, then you, you replace that frame, right? But if the use bit is not zero, um, you're going to be searching, right? So, so as long as the use bit is not zero, you keep looking, you keep incrementing to the next frame pointer, uh, wrapping around the buffer if you have to, until you find a use bit that's zero, right? And, and when you're doing that, if, if you find that the use bit is one, you move to the next frame, but you set the use bit to zero before you move to the next bit. So that's how, you know, so, so for, for the clock paging system on a page hit, the use bit gets set to one. And then when we, when we make our replacement decision, um, as we search through, we skip over any frames whose use bit is one and we flip the use bit back to zero, right? And then, then we replace the first frame that we find whose use bit is zero. That's, that's basically how the, the clock page replacement works. Um, all right, and then as a final thing, so you do need to get your scheme status working in order to get the unit test to work. So, um, and, and we are testing um, some of these implementations of, of like the, the, the clock unit test. Okay, so let me first look at like, um, so if you look at FIFO, the output from the FIFO, all of this output, which is the, the status of the, of the uh, paging system, of the page replacement system at the time step comes from that, that function that I was pointing out. So, so all this output here is coming from the um, get scheme status. So basically all we're doing is iterating over all of the physical frames of memory. Um, and for the FIFO, we're just um, outputting either the page that's in the frame or outputting empty if that if that page is empty. Right? Uh, and then also for FIFO, we're showing where the page, the frame pointer is at each step. That's, that's where what this last if statement does here. Um, it displays where the frame pointer is pointing to. Right? Um,
So if you look at clock page replacement, um, it looks exactly the same as FIFO. So like I said, you can pretty much copy the get scheme status, but you do need to add in a little bit extra information. So you have to not only display the, the page uh, and then the frame pointer for your clock um, algorithm, but you have to display the use bits, right? Um, So um, oh, one thing I forgot to mention, um, so actually all the use bits start off as one, although the important thing is that whenever you load, whenever you do a page placement or a page replacement, another thing you need to do is that the use bit should be set to one when, when the page is first loaded into a frame, okay? And so, so when page two came in, its use bit was one, and page three, so, so initially it's one, or one, right? And it doesn't get flipped to zero until we have to do a page replacement and, and the, we, we start scanning through memory um, and skipping over any, anyone whose use bit is one and flipping its use bit to zero, like, like we did here. Um, so here, when we make a page replacement decision using clock, um, um, it's pointing to frame zero and all the use bits are one. So it actually scans all the way through memory, flipping them all to zero wrapping all the way back around to the beginning and ultimately deciding to replace frame zeros page two, right? So, but, but notice that the use bits got flipped to zero um, and then this page got replaced and five got loaded in over replacing two. And since five was newly loaded in, its use bit was set to one for the, the, the load of page five. Okay. So that's basically it for um, assignment four. Um, as usual, if you have questions, feel free to email me or contact me for a face-to-face -face session. Um, otherwise, um, that's it. I'll post this video as usual and see you guys later.